All right, guys, we're going to talk about the new map that I got for the Blue Bowl. We just did a little run on it. We were doing some goofing off. Um, so, what I normally do, and used to do at home, was I would take my Miller table, and it would be set up on this other little pump, and it would empty out into my Blue Bowl. Because the flat gold stays on the Miller table, but it blows out of the Blue Bowl floats out but the uh, grainy round wiry gold rolls off the miller table but we get caught in my blue bowl so i would have my flat gold collection and then i'd have my grainy gold collection and this would always back up and it would take forever to run and one of the things you've been noticing is that a lot of people have been taking the micro mats and hooking them to the miller tables because the miller table even takes a while to run and you got to be feeding it all the time. The Blue Bowl has kind of an advantage where you can dump some material in it, turn it on, and if you have a good setting, walk away, go do your thing, come back, and, you know, the wash pot never boils. But if you're not there, then it gets done. And that's kind of the goal. So in, so that we're not trying to turn the Blue Bowl into something where you got to constantly add material to. What we want to do is we want to add the material, we want to turn it on, and we want to walk away and come back and get our goal. And one of the things that we're trying to do with this mat is not uh, uh, run it at the same speed. We want to speed it up. So what we're going to be doing is if you have a blue bowl, it's the only thing you have, because a lot of people have uh, equipment and they don't go out and buy everything. And so they don't buy a whole bunch of different equipment. Every time something comes out, they kind of buy something and stick with it. Um, so if this is your only finishing product at home, there would be a nice way that you could run your cons faster and cut them cut them down and then do a final run without the mat so the the dream mat what it's in here for is to help you run this at a higher speed still catch some gold and actually do a good job catching uh uh gold that would maybe even blow out sorry about my finger there so what the theory is and what the the what what do we have going on here is we have our inlet. I'll get over here where there's no, um, uh, we got our flow going this direction. And as our flow goes around the blue bowl, it gathers, gathers the material in the center here and it walks up the horn or the slope here and it goes out, the lighter material goes out and the heavier material gathers around the edges. So, the vortexes are all in the same flow direction where let's see if we can refocus here as we're going we spin our material and we gather so we're basically collecting in these cells in the same direction actually in the same shape but just like a bunch of mini blue balls i know it's tangent off center and this is center but it's basically the same concept so bigger gold as it's going as you feed your material in and walk away will get trapped and held into the cells rather than get blown out the horn on the on the, on the higher speed so that's what the, the cells are in there for is to capture your material while you're um uh, you know want to load it up for a process so let's go ahead and you know put some material it's got some gold in it beach gold this is all fine um uh it's pre-wetted it's kind of sloppy here Let's go ahead and I'm, uh, put some material in the blue bowl here that we know has gold in it. And we will turn her on, run it, and I'm, uh, see, how we, I'm, uh, see how we do. Um, I got about four cups of material here. I think I'll put in maybe about a cup and a half. We won't put in overload it too much, but um, uh, but that's the that's the goal is to you know cut this stuff down so that you yeah, just cover up the outside edges. All right, so I got about a cup and a half of material in there and we'll go ahead and there's a little bit of soap in the water we'll go ahead and we'll turn this guy on 
and we'll let her process. Spilt a little bit, but that's why it's in a tub. I can always go after it. So I'm gonna turn this guy up a little bit faster. What we know, a lot of blue bowlers will normally say, "Hey, you're running too fast." Well, that's kind of the goal. You know, we want to get a little speed on this thing. Get this black sands off of here. We don't want to have to have a time lapse film because we're going to sit here for an hour. People are going to watch the spin. That's not the goal here. And but I don't want it to go all the way up to the brim. Um, so here we are. We're about three quarters of the way full running on this guy and we are starting to process and you can see that there's gold in the material this is all beach gold and this is all beach sands this is oregon gold this is and so i basically reintroduced you know this is some i actually had uh four cups of cons left over from a run off the miller table and i knew there was still gold in there and um, but they were run off the miller table before I got the blue bowl, so I knew they still had some gold in it, and I haven't rerun them. But then I did add some gold for basically the show of the video, you know. So I had probably two grams of beach gold that I had added to it, and then I had about three grams of some fine crush ore that gold that I added to. So there's about five grams of gold in here. So besides what was in there from the tailings left over from the Miller table. Because like we say, you know, the Miller table, what happens is the, the fine gold, what happens is the fine gold that's grainy runs off. And the gold that is flat stays on there, it gets pinned down. That's why the Miller table does a good job exploiting that. I almost need one of those little loops where you can pop your uh, camera in the water. But we'll just have to do with this. Um, so there it is. It's running about three quarter. You know, um, because I don't want to go chasing all a lot of gold that I know that I could turn this up. And I could still have a lot of gold on the mat when it's all said and done and a lot of gold catching because of the mascot contour but I would blow out some fine gold and that would kind of defeat the purpose so you know I could you know put this baby up here but I know I'm gonna lose that really really fine gold that's in the black sands and we don't want to do that we're trying to you know just this is a walk away deal where you load it up walk away We'll smoke a cigarette, drink a beer, um, continue their job in your shop in the wintertime, and let these cells help capture the gold. See how that cell right on that leading edge is filling up and holding that gold. And that's kind of what we're looking for. And hard to focus underneath there with that light um oops you even got gold in the, the letters see how the gold even hanging up in the letters so the cells are grabbing gold and slowing down basically the gold from riding up and out so basically what we're doing is we're just trying to capture some gold before it rides up and out and if it didn't have those contours the gold would be basically creeping up over the top of the black sands right now because of the speed of the bowl being as high as it is so actually because I know there's a lot of people out there that really want to see you know how what the goal really want to see what it can do we'll go ahead and we'll turn her up just a little bit and get some of these black sands off here here we 
I've got this little valve over here I'm playing with. I'm just barely touching it because I don't want to, you know, do the surge thing. Okay, so now we're a little bit more above three quarter. You can see it dancing over here. Just a little bit from the edge. So now we're really whipping. You can see that actually the black sands moving all across around the horn, pretty high. Um, again, you see the cells grabbing the gold, holding it for a while rather than letting it jump up over the horn. So that's the goal. Slow the gold down so you can cut your material faster. So that's as fast as I'm going to run it. I know if I run it any faster, a lot of, in, in, we know that we're losing, you know, some, we're losing some 300 mesh gold that's in there if there's any from the, the beach, but most of it's around 100 to 150, you know, um, there's some 200 in there. Um, a lot of people, you know, make gold smaller than what it is, but, um, uh, Anyway, so there's our, there's our gold streaking along the edge, holding up in those cells. And as this cone gets smaller, it, it, it creeps it in. It lets it come in. So this is going to be a long video. We're already 11 minutes into it. So we're going to give it a five-minute break, and we're going to turn it on again in five minutes and take a look at what's going on. Not even five minutes into it, I just figured I'd just take a little shot because it was looking pretty neat. I'm watching these cells open up on the horn, and I'm uh, so this is where you want the ability to capture gold. So, water's running pretty high. It's kind of starting to stack up a little bit, and it does that if you, I know any way that runs a bowl. And I got a little pump in here, so it's a little pond pump, so it's pretty constant. And I actually got, you know, another line coming off it that's bleeding out. Um, but it kind of rises on me a little bit, so we're almost to the top. We're run so we're running pretty hot. You know, most people don't run their bowls this hot. Making a high-tech sight tube here, seeing if it's going to work. It's burning up pretty high here. It keeps creeping up on me. It's low. Let's see if my high-tech sight tube works here. And my saran wrap isn't quite giving me the, the clarity I thought it would. Oh, well, you know, I tried. What can I say? High-tech sight tube, saran wrap, and a toilet paper tube. No. Alright, well the goal here too is we'll, we'll um, uh, burn this off, take a look at it, then we'll put the rest of this in here, burn it off, take a look at it, and then we'll suck her out and then we'll run the cons to see what uh, blew out, to see if it actually has the benefit, which some people feel it needs to have, where you're capturing most of your gold in your first run into where your tailings, your percentages are real low. So you can basically, instead of take forever to get most of your gold, you can 
turbocharge your blue bowl. So we're making some observations as where the hole is, or the inlet of the blue bowl. Can't see it with the, there we go. Where the higher pressure is, cells seem to be empty. As we come around, then the pressure dissipates through the rest of the whole bowl. You know, high pressure, flow, squirting of the nozzle, dissipates, the pressure is seeking to reach ambient pressure coming through, that the cells are filling up with the gold, the little the little holes is what we're talking about, the capture area, not the, the well, which is the U-shape, but the little hole. And as we come around, they fill up with gold. And then once we reach to the point where the high pressure zone hits it again, it blows them out. But as you can see, you know, that's the goal really was to... As this goes around the merry-go-round, so to speak, that we provide these nice little traps for this gold to fall in and shelter self. But not such a big trap that um, we have a lot of black sand with it. And as you can see, as she's cleaning up, there isn't a whole lot of black sand that is basically filling those cells on that outer rim. It's mostly all gold. Look at that. So and that's the hope as she cleans up and goes around. Turned her down a little bit. She kept creeping up on me. I had to find that sweet spot on the dial. You know, where it didn't keep creeping up on me. So hopefully now she'll stay right about here and not keep creeping up. Cool beans. Figured I'd just take a still shot. What's going on? Think I'm gonna put the rest in. Even cleans up pretty good with that gold that slips along the edge there when the black sand is blown out. Then we'll go ahead and load the rest up in, give her a run. Because I ain't going to sit here and wait forever. Because that's the goal. It's not to wait forever. And get this material run. So we can look at all just the gold in the bowl. And um, then we'll run the tailings. And then we'll take a look at what the end result is. Alright, got the rest of the material in here. Let's go ahead and give this guy a go. And let's get this run. And get this over with. We all want to see the ending. We all see the results. Results rule. That's all we care about is can I get my gold? Can I get it quicker? Um, I don't care what it looks like, what it's shaped like. It's got bells or whistles. That's a little high. Um, got a little spazzed out there. Sorry guys. Um, I was about ready to go up over the edge. <laughs> but you know trying to get it a little bit more than three quarters of the way up so there's only about a less than a half inch from it coming up over the top there not quite touching it. So we know that we're going to get the bulk of our gold. And we're only, the only gold we're really going to lose is off the top of the cone pile, like the 300 mesh. Um, but we'll see. We'll run this pile again at the same speed. And we'll see what we missed out of our tailings, what we flushed down through the system. And see what she does. There's my pinky. Some people's pinkies are bigger than others. Um, let's take measures right here. Oop, about a half inch. Oop. 
Nothing happens. Good job. And there she goes. All right, I'm going to turn this thing off and I'm going to eat some cookies with Randy. And we're just going to let this thing run and we'll come back and take a look at it. Still going. Put a pile of material in there. She's collected on the edge. As the top cone gets burned off, I know that's a lot of material. A lot of people don't like to see that much material in the bowl. And she's running pretty hot, but that's the whole deal. Let's see if we can actually see it. Turbo. Can we see the name Turbo full of gold down there? Turbo. That's the whole upside down, if you can read upside down. <laughs> That's it. There it is over there. Turbo Bowl. Anyways, fun stop. I'm going to go put some gas in my truck, get me a snack at the store, go back, take a look at this. All right, back from the store. Gold around the edges. Starting to eat away at that cone. Cool beans. It stayed pretty good and steady on the whole time I was gone. It looks like about a half inch, so that's good. Bought some beans. Got some cool action as the cell opens up around the horn. And starts cleaning itself out and gathering a little gold in the cell there. See it? How it's picking it up and how it's keeping the black sands out. It's kind of cool. Yeah, that was one of the predictions, you know, from a lot of people that were really throwing in their wonderful two cents is that every one of these little holes is going to fill up with black sand. And so far, that's a nada. Um, so, you know, let's just look at the practical use of it. We're just, we're not trying to uh, reinvent the wheel. We are trying to bling it up a little bit, you know. You know, the, the first wheels came out wooden spokes, and then we have, you know, steel tires, and then you got, you know, the hot rod mag rims, you know, so this is like, you know, uh, we're trying to just get some profile in there, get a little action going on that kind of complements the blue bowl in its shape, the hydrocyclone flowing in the same direction, the same spin, and actually not only the cells do that, but the pattern is on the blue bowl's spin also to allow for some contours that... When I was designing this, one of my major thoughts was how to design the contour, how to design it, without trapping the black sands, how deep do I make it, how, or how, maybe too shallow, that I can turn this thing up and still catch the gold and create a break. And that was one of my worries was I don't want a system, once I run it, to have a bunch of black patches, like everybody said, all these things be full of just black sand because that defeats the purpose of the cleaning. So it took a lot of noodling and thinking about it, you know, and, and looking at the blue bowl, sprinkling material in there, judging it, to think, okay, what do we want to do? Do we want to concentrate, have a bunch of cons in the bottom, and pull it out, or do we just want gold? Well, I kind of felt that we want to just be able to speed it up, cream off most of the gold, and basically run the bowl faster. And we all know that you can't cheat physics, that we are going to lose some gold. And that nothing's bulletproof, especially that finer gold that's going to move up over the horn and flow out. And we're going to see how much physics we cheated. We're still holding about a half inch there. We're going we're to call that, just for the sake of fun, half inch from the rim. We'll call that the official speed. Just because I think I like the way it looks. Anything more, and that seems a little bit more turbulent, and I think you'll lose too much of that super uber fine gold. Um, when we re rerun the second batch of sand, we re re rerun it, we're going to see how much gold, basically, um, we lost. Um, so, one of the things that I need to do 
afterwards, which is going to take forever, which will be an end recap on this video, is take the mat out, rerun all these material through the bowl at its normal speeds, and die a slow death. You know, because <laughs> the bowl's slow, man. And I'm going to have to just, in the evenings, sit down and run it. And then we will show basically then the final cut, which will be rerunning the rerunning the tailings a second time in just the blue bowl to see what the actual losses are, the total losses. Um, and then basically people then can look at the map and determine whether or not it's got merit. Do, is it got enough merit? Am I losing? Too much gold, or am I gaining um, the efficiency of being able to cut my material real fast in one short session under an hour and get my material? You know, out all this fine material that they normally would run for, you know, a lot longer. Um, and like I said, I had four cups of material, more than four cups. So, anyways, this all. People that have run the bowl are going to be the experts because they're the guys running the bowl. They're running it and they're spending that time and they're going to have to determine where time is best spent. Okay. Well, I brought the test home from Randy's shop so it got kind of jostled around in the back of the rig. I left a little water in it, so it's re really kind of swirling again. Just started it back up. So we'll let it run for a while and watch it clear up. That was the swirl camera. The swirl cam. Yeah. There we go. You like that? <laughs>
around, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, round, round, I get around, I get around. Cause it's never been beat And we've never missed yet With the girls we meet None of the guys go steady Cause it wouldn't be right To leave your best girl home On a Saturday night I get around
Okay, there are the results of the three vials. There's the first run. Dream Act cut in 37 minutes, something like that. And then the second run was like 40 some minutes. And the last run was a long, long time. We took it really slow over to bat. And we had a lot of black sands to clean up. So there's your cut of the gold that's out of there. Not that there's a little bit more gold left in there. But there it is. There's your run. That's what the Dream Mat can do for you in a short amount of time. As opposed to the hours the Blue Bowl uh, usually processes the material. Cool. Use a couple dabs of silicone. I'll spread that around with my finger. That's all I should need to hold the mat down in place. It'll peel right up and peel right off of the urethane afterwards. So it's kind of a no mess kind of deal. So you'll, you know, yeah, don't take much. There you go. Let it dry for about 10 minutes and 15 minutes and let it on my starter up.